Hey everybody, Photo Walk Talks edition Yellowstone with one of the masters of photographing Yellowstone, Juan Pons, he's been there, he's gonna tell you how many years, but he's been uh, teaching classes there at Yellowstone in the winter for many years. Juan, how many years is it? Um, I, If I remember correctly, this year was my 16th winter in a row that I've been uh, leading workshops in Yellowstone in the winter. Which is amazing considering that this year is a pandemic and yes. you went out anyway because socially distanced out in the snow, right? Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we had a pretty strict uh, protocol that we followed. We did everything right. People had to get COVID tests. And, you know, I did two workshops, you know, with a few days in between and everything, everybody came home uh, healthy and safe. So it worked. And I bet they got amazing photos too. Yeah, I mean, you know, and Yellowstone is such a spectacular place any time of the year, but the winter especially is just absolutely spectacular. The snow just changes the landscape completely in Yellowstone. People who've been there many times, you know, they'll go in the winter and they say they don't recognize a lot of the places that, that, that we go to. It's that incredible. Well, so, so tell everybody about the joy of Yellowstone, because I believe it's one of the, the biggest national parks, and it's certainly in the summertime, it's one of the most crowded national parks so it what's is. the joy of yellowstone well you know so <laughs> the joy of yellowstone is not to go in the summer I'm, no, I'm just kidding you know summer can be beautiful as well the trick this is my patented trick for going into in the summer to yellowstone is you want to get out before sunrise first time in the morning first thing in the morning you're going to have the park to yourself, even if it's the middle of July, the middle of August, which are the busiest time. August is the busiest time in Yellowstone. Um, but if you go right before sunrise, you can get out to Lamar Valley or Hayden Valley or the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone and pretty much have the place to yourself. You can hear the, the wolves howling in the distance or you can hear the coyotes howling. You can see uh, grizzly bears. Because when people go out there on vacation, they don't want to get up <laughs> before sunrise and go out and shoot. They want to sleep in a little bit. So you can take advantage of that and have the park to yourself. Now, as it gets close to noon and then in the afternoon into sunset, it can get a little crazy. But even though sunset time, people want to go back, have dinner with their families and stuff. It starts, you know, the crowds start diminishing. So that's really the trick for going in the summer. But if you really want to have the place to yourself, you got to come with me in the winter. It is uh, spectacular. Okay, well, tell everybody what they'll see in the wintertime. Oh, man, um, just about the same species. The only one species you don't get to see is uh, bears because bears are hibernating. But we get wolves, coyotes, foxes, pronghorn, um, elk, uh, uh, long-tailed weasels, otters, martens. Uh, golden eagles, bald eagles, bighorn sheep. Uh, I'm, I, I'm sure that I'm missing a few. Swans and uh, all sorts of kind of ducks, a lot of different birds as well. And 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 that's a winter thing. I mean, you'll see um, them both both times of the year, but but you like yes. you like the whole thing against the snow. Well, see, what happens in the winter is a couple of things that happens in the winter makes it a lot better for wildlife, watching wildlife photography. So the, uh, the behavior of the animals is a little bit more predictable in the winter. You know, animals have to, they have to eat, they have to feed. So they have to be out in the snow and, you know, they stand out against the snow. The camouflage doesn't work as well against the snow. Some animals it does, like a long-tailed weasel turns into, it turns white and some rabbits, for example, turn white in the winter. But, you know, a bison, it's a lot easier to see. A coyote, a fox, a wolf, a, a bighorn sheep are easier to see when they're against a white background. And again, especially if it's cold, which is what we want when we're out there in the winter, we want it to be very cold because the animals are more active because, you know, they can't just pop into McDonald's and grab something to eat. They have to go out and hunt for food. So they're very active. Um, and also, if, it, if it, there's a lot of snow, it's even better because, you know, when the snow is really deep, it makes it harder for the animals to move around. So guess what? They tend to gravitate towards the roads, towards the areas that are groomed for us to go in our snow coaches. So they tend to be a little closer to us. And the fact that there's not that many people around, you know, also helps with the animal because they're not uh, as skittish. Now, for, there's besides um, uh, wildlife, there's landscapes. The landscapes are just absolutely spectacular especially when it's very cold you get this frost on the trees the cottonwoods 
where they have lost all their leaves and all of a sudden turn white with all this frost on them is just absolutely, you know, otherworldly. Okay, well, you've got some great ideas on where to shoot wildlife in, in Yellowstone in the winter. But before we actually talk about that spot, talk about photographing in the winter, in the cold. I'm thinking your camera fogging up. I'm thinking uh, batteries uh, screwing up and not being able to turn it on because it's so cold. So how cold is it? And what tips do you have there for photographers? Well, you know, the coldest I've ever been has been in Yellowstone. One year I uh, had minus 42 degrees Fahrenheit, which is very, very, very cold. Um, typically it is really not that cold during the day. In the mornings when we go out to shoot sunrise, you know, we may encounter minus 15. This year we encountered one day with minus 26. Um, but that's what we want because the landscape gets transformed and the animals become more active uh, during that time. But during the day, it usually gets, you know, up in the 30s or something along those lines, maybe even as high as 40s. That's not typical, but you could expect between 20s and 30s in the middle of the day. And, you know, as long as you're dressed warm enough, you're, you're going to be fine. You're not going to you're not going to suffer, um, you know, unless we have like a big windstorm. If you have lots of some areas of the park are prone for high winds and, you know, even at, you know, 20 degrees, a 20 mile an hour wind can drop that temperature significantly. From, from an equipment perspective, um, you know, batteries, you know, cameras last so long nowadays with the batteries. And usually what I do is I keep one set, one spare battery inside a jacket pocket so they stay nice and warm when I'm out shooting so I can swap them if I need to. But one big misconception about Yellowstone, one that you mentioned is the fogging of the camera equipment, which doesn't really happen because it is so dry out there. Yellowstone is an incredibly dry location, even in the winter. So you typically do not run into fogging, especially when you're inside a vehicle, going to outside, you're going from a, a place with more moisture inside the vehicle to a place with almost no moisture at all outside. So there's hardly any fogging. The only fogging you may run into is if you're at the end of the day, you're outside, been outside all day long, your camera gear's cold, you go back into your hotel and in the hotel, um, you know, there may be a higher level of moisture in the air and you may get some condensation, but typically again, because it's so dry, even the hotels, the air inside the hotels or your room is gonna be pretty dry. But in a case like that, one of the things that I recommend people do is they keep the camera gear inside the camera bag and bring their camera bag into the hotel room and just let it sit and acclimate for over a couple of hours and let it kind of warm up slowly. And then you don't get any of that fogging on the lenses. Okay, let's talk about photo spots. So uh, <laughs> five great photo spots in Yellowstone. Let's start with where to go in the winter to see wildlife. Well, for wildlife, you know, there's two locations that are kind of the prime locations for wildlife. My favorite is Lamar Valley. Lamar Valley is the hot spot for wildlife. And the areas around Lamar Valley. Um, Lamar Valley is this huge valley that, um, you know, tradition has been a uh, hot spot for wolf sightings. You get bighorn sheep, you may get foxes, coyotes, wolves, bison, um, elk, moose, uh, and a lot of other things. So it's a pretty large area. So you have to continue to be look on the lookout for these animals. But over the years, you kind of learn their preferred locations where they like to hang out. Um, so by far, my favorite place is Lamar Valley. But there's also Hayden Valley. Um, Hayden Valley is another valley that is a little less um, populated by wildlife. But when there is wildlife there, it can be absolutely spectacular. With to go into Hidden Valley in the winter, you have to go in a snow coach. You cannot be, you cannot drive yourself. You have to charter some sort of snow vehicle to go in, and it has to be guided. Um, so it's a little bit more difficult um, to go there. And, and okay, there but but, other... when, but when you do your class, you rent the snow coach. Yes, yeah, so part, part of the deal for signing up, right? Uh, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. My my workshops are all inclusive, so you all you have to do is get yourself to the Bozeman Airport, and we take care of everything, take care of everything from there, from lodging, meals, to all the transportation, both in vehicles as well as the privately chartered snow coaches, so we can go where the animals are. Um, so a couple of the places for wildlife that I like to go. One of the 
you know, one of the uh, uh, hotspots for uh, other kinds of wildlife, excluding um, otters, river otters, which are one of people's favorites because they're so playful, is along the Yellowstone River near the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. That's another hotspot for wildlife that we like to visit quite often. And that's kind of at the entrance to Hayden Valley. So you kind of get two, two places to go um, in one shot. But, you know, all throughout Yellowstone, it's just incredible. You know, one of the cool things to think about when you're in Yellowstone is that if you travel all the roads in Yellowstone, you've only seen 3% of the park. The park is that big and so much of it is backcountry. Yet we get to see so much wildlife um, on those roads, whether they're, you know, usually um, you're going to have the most luck when you're traveling along a river, like the area along the Madison River um, between Madison Junction and West Yellowstone. That's another hotspot that we travel to quite a bit for all sorts of wildlife. Okay. One of the other uh, top photo spots, at least in the summer, is Old Geyser. Do you shoot that in the winter? Uh, Old Faithful. Yeah, absolutely. Old Faithful, we, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do that in the winter sometimes. You know, the challenge in the, with, the, with the thermal features in the winter is that because it's colder, they let out a lot more steam. Right. And if you have overcast skies, you kind of lose the, the definition of those thermal features against the sky. So you want blue skies. If you have blue skies, absolutely. All faithful is spectacular, you know, any time of the year. Uh, and the winter can be really, really neat as well. Um, another one that's a favorite is Grand Prismatic, which I'm sure you've seen that image. You know, you shoot, you've seen from overhead of this, in, this pool with just in incredible colors, blues, oranges, reds, yellows, that it really looks that way. I mean, some of the pictures are a little bit oversaturated, but it does look absolutely spectacular. That's a better location for the summer, not so much in the winter, because what happens in the winter, again, is you have so much steam, it obscures a lot of that uh, spring, so you don't see it as much. But in the summer, it's just one of the top locations, I would say, that you have to go when you're and um, how did you, oh, well, actually first, where do you stay? Do you stay in Bozeman or do you stay in, uh, in the park? So, um, depends. So uh, we stay, Bozeman is a little too far away. Bozeman is about an hour and a half away from the north entrance to the park. Um, so oftentimes in one of my favorite places to stay is at the north entrance. It's a little town called Gardner. Um, and it's a small town. But you have a number of restaurants there, a couple of locations to stay at, and it's pretty inexpensive. Once you want to stay inside the park, as you can imagine, the prices go up tremendously. Um, so if you're in there in the summer, my absolute favorite place to stay is the Roosevelt Lodge, which is kind of the most central place to stay in the park. There are little cabins, kind of old style cabins that you stay in. Um, that if it gets cold, you have to start a fire in your own little wood stove so you don't freeze to death in there. But because it's so central and it's so quaint, it's absolutely my favorite place. But the Old Faithful Inn is also a place that you should not miss. The Old Faithful Inn is one of the, it was, I want to say it's the oldest, but it's not, it's one of the oldest and largest log structures in the world. This building it's an incredibly large building that was made with logs. It looks like a Lincoln log structure. For those of you that remember what Lincoln logs look like. Well, uh, um, I, think I, I think I remember. <laughs> now, I've stayed it, in Chico Hot Springs, which is what, uh -huh. an, hour, an hour away? Yes, about an hour away north of the park. Yep. Okay, that was fantastic. And I was there yes. in the summer. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah there, there are a couple of springs, even there's one inside the park at uh, near Mammoth that you can go swimming in as well. That's actually a very popular location. It's at a place called Boiling River. Um, if you're there, make sure to bring your, your swimsuit and go in there. And also along um, the Madison, because the Madison, again, is, is thermal water. So the water is actually pretty warm. Even in the middle of winter, the temperature of the water could be 40, 50 degrees. Uh, but in the summer, it's much warmer than that. It can be 70 degrees. And it's one of the, the best places to go swimming in inside the park. Okay. Now, how did you get started photographing Yellowstone? What brought you there? Huh. Um, <clears throat> but it's kind of interesting. You know, many, many moons ago, before I started really leading workshops, I had a neighbor who was a... Uh, uh, a nature guide, if you will. He used to teach, I, I was living in North Carolina at the time, and he used to teach at the 
you know, uh, at the Museum of um, Natural Sciences. He was one of the, 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 the staff members there and they, he would teach programs to teachers across North Carolina about Yellowstone. And he would love, he'd love Yellowstone. And he took me there one year and I absolutely fell in love with Yellowstone. I went with him very first time in the fall, the second time in the winter. And that's when I really got into Yellowstone. I was really into photography. I was doing a lot of photography. I was selling a lot of my work back then, but that's really what, you know, I fell in love with Yellowstone right from the get go. And it's, it has been a love affair ever since. I have not missed going there in all this time. And of course you live in Maine. It's not exactly right next door. It <laughs> takes a lot of work yeah. to get there, right? Oh uh, yeah. This, this year it took me 24 hours to get home with storms and delays and all that kind of stuff. Usually I have to take three flights to get from Maine all the way to Bozeman. Okay. So, it's so, not, so it, that's in the winter. Tell the us summer's the a little easy. Tell us the flight. So is it, is it Portland <laughs> to Chicago or something or what? So it's, yeah, so it depends. Sometimes it's Portland or Bangor to New York, uh, either uh, uh, LaGuardia or JFK. From there, usually to Minneapolis, St. Paul, and then from Minneapolis to Bozeman. Or it could be also from Maine to Detroit, Detroit, Minneapolis, Bozeman, or Detroit, Salt Lake, <laughs> Bozeman. So it, it, yeah, it, it's not, as they say here, you can't get there from here. Right. Okay. <laughs> but, but, but you clearly love it and it's worth it. Now is, is Yellowstone, do you consider that you're going to Wyoming or Montana? Well, it, it, that is funny because, you know, 96%, I think it is, of Yellowstone is in Wyoming. Um, yet three of the entrances to the park are, three of the five entrances to the park are in Montana. Uh, the north entrance, the west entrance, and the northeast entrance. Those three are in the Montana. And west entrance being the most popular entrance park so yes you we usually stay in montana but we are you know immediately kind of cross into into wyoming and spend our time in yellowstone and, wyoming, so. and the the parts of yellowstone that we talked about the uh, where the where the wildlife are that would that be that is that wyoming or montana all wyoming uh, okay. all wyoming. literally the 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 montana has just slivers along the edges if you look at a map it's just the edges i'm sure there was some political thing going on there how that how that turned out to be <laughs> well i want to encourage everyone to check out juan's amazing wildlife work and his amazing photography juanpons.com thank right? you right yeah juanpons.org what.org okay yes. and um uh, he's got a lot of workshops i think you've got some some coming up in the fall I look like they were already sold out. Oh, I, yeah, it's, you know, the pandemic for a while was kind of making sales go pretty slow. But all of a sudden, I want to say in the past month or so, thing, things have gone crazy. So most of my stuff is sold out. I have a few things that are open right now. I have a trip to Antarctica that's open. I have a trip to, I have some spaces in Costa Rica. I have some spaces in uh, Bosque de la Pache in New Mexico. And uh and kind of a little secret, um, I had some clients that really, really wanted to go to Yellowstone in the spring. I had a workshop scheduled, but I canceled because of COVID, but I have some clients that really want to go. So I'm just about to announce oh, an opening for, I don't know, maybe four spots for a spring, it, it, late May of 2021 trip to Yellowstone. Okay, well, that sounds fun. Uh, and uh, just look, check out Juan's website so that you can sign up, right? Absolutely. That would be the best place to check him out. I have them all listed there with pictures, itineraries, costs, all that information is there. But obviously, if you have questions, you know, you can always feel free to email me and you'll find the link on how to email me on the website. All right. Now you will see a second episode with Juan talking about Maine. So right now we're just going to say goodbye. Thanks, Juan.